you know, this whole thing about the energy body, yeah, pff, you know, whatever, right? I mean, that's just maybe a metaphor. And during this retreat, I found out that there, you know, the energy body is not a metaphor. I mean, it it is a is it's an experiential body. It exists, and as your awareness becomes very very sharp, and your focus becomes very very sharp and very keen, if you apply it to the sensations in your body, what starts to happen is that you're not just perceiving sensation, but as you swipe that perception around you're starting to move energy around your body in very specific ways and you're starting to hit certain energetic centers for lack of a better word which is what these guys call the chakras now i didn't believe in any of this stuff but suddenly i was actually experiencing it during during the retreat and uh it started to become more and more interesting of course Hey everyone, this is Pablo for Meditation Amsterdam here. And today is the 11th of May. Um, so you could say that spring has really kicked in here in Amsterdam. Uh, I've, been, um, I've been thinking about making this video for a couple of months now since I got back from my Vipassana retreat. And um, I've been postponing it for all kinds of reasons, uh, not, not least of which was the fact that I didn't think I was quite ready for, uh, for making the video. Um, I still needed to digest the experience quite a bit. Uh, as you've seen, I've created a, uh, a video as soon as I got back uh, with some of the practicalities about going to a Vipassana retreat. Uh, but I never really spoke about the experience that I had there. And uh, so I thought I'd, uh, I'd give this one a try. Uh, I'm here at Soku Amsterdam. It's a lovely terrace, as you can see. It has a great view. And it has, I'm sitting in this nice hammock here. And you got that kind of um, little glass hallway there with all kinds of cool plants. And, uh, and I came here with my boosted board, of course. Nice little chai latte there waiting for me. And uh, so, um, yeah, so Vipassana um, was a hell of an intense experience for me. Um, I was just last night talking to uh, this friend of mine with whom I went, Yorma. And he's booked another one for September this year, and uh, I said to him, uh, "I don't, I don't think I, I want to do that just yet. Uh, I think I want to just have my regular meditation practice, have a go at that every day, and uh, and just develop little by little rather than going into these big jumps." Um, so, um, what essentially happened during the, the Vipassana retreat is I spent a, a good part of 11 hours per day meditating. And during the first three days, you practice what is called anapana. And that is focusing on the, um, on the sensation of the breath underneath your, your nostrils. Uh, and you start to uh, progressively make the, the area of focus more and more narrow up until the point where you are just focusing on this little bit here that where the um, uh, the base of the nose meets with the upper lip and I got to the point where my area of focus was kind of like a, like a, you know the the top of a pin essentially uh, and it became very very sharp and my focus became very stable and during those first days I started to experience um, what um, Japanese Zen calls Satori which are uh, moments of absolute um, stillness of mind and absolute focus with no thoughts just pure consciousness pure perception I don't think I can call those very deep Satori's if I listen to um, you know the ones that people experience when they're very advanced Zen meditators or, or just general meditation practitioners um, but they were quite impressive and they were taking place even outside of the meditation session so as, as I was taking breaks in between I would walk in the grounds of the of the retreat center and there were times where I was just listening to pure sound around me and everything I saw acquired a clear and absolutely pristine quality uh, there were there was no thinking in my mind whatsoever. I was just pure perception, 
and I was enjoying it quite a lot actually um, and my senses became incredibly sharp my hearing became so sharp that I could hear a, an ongoing sort of still buzz um, even when things were completely quiet uh, and, and that was quite impressive as well and <clears throat> that got me thinking okay you know the further I take this the, the deeper I'll get into this state and uh, and the, the more enjoyment I'll get out of this but by day four <coughs> excuse me um, the whole dynamic of the retreat changes and then you start to practice what's the actual vipassana technique and the vipassana technique is you begin to scan your body from head to toe um, starting from the top of the head and assuming that you have some kind of um, uh, like a like a like a scanning um, area that you're moving around your skin so you begin with the top of your head and then you um, scan your face and you scan the back of your head and you move down progressively and as you move down you'll find areas where there's no real sensations in your body or these these sort of um, yeah you could call them like black areas where nothing is really happening uh, and you try to focus on those and you'll discover are areas where the sensation is very gross so you try to um, smoothen that out so to speak and essentially you are you're doing a body scan and you are you are scanning for sensations across the body in a kind of sweeping uh, manner um, but because you've done the anapana for three days your perception of body sensations is enormously sharp i mean uh, it's it's like a scalpel and um, and you're going very deep in your into your body sensations and you do that all day right just so you do that 10 hours a day uh, you start by just taking a little patch uh, like say here and focusing on the on the bodily sensations in that area of your forehead and then you kind of move it and you focus again and, and so you go but as the days progress your um, ability to to sort of sweep and move that area of focus uh, starts to become better and better and also you become better at focusing on several areas at a time in parallel so you could be scanning both your cheekbones and moving your your perception down your face on both sides at the same time and so on and the sensations start to become quite intense um, so you keep doing this over and over again and then swiping bigger and bigger areas of your body and then there will be moments where you're just scanning you know your entire to torso uh, at, at, a, at, at a time and um, what happened to me at least was that as I was scanning I was not just perceiving sensations but I was also my um, the muscles in that area started to move and, and felt there's no other way to describe it but saying that it, they felt energized. It, it is as if by moving my awareness, I was moving energy through my body. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I read all about it afterwards and I, you know, there are some neurological explanations to that which we can get into. Um, but what I started to notice is that as the retreat went by, these, uh, this energy started to become stronger and stronger. And it became particularly uh, strong and a little bit disturbing when I was not doing the scan going from from head to toe but going from from bottom up so bringing my awareness through my feet through my legs through my torso and then up to the head um, and then um, so that started to become more and more intense as, as time went by and I also started to notice that there were areas where that sensation was particularly strong and particularly uh, interesting and it just so happened that those areas were coinciding with with what is known as the seven chakras right uh, which I had been reading about in the past I never really believed in them I didn't think that a chakra was something that existed um, and um, but the more I got into the, the, the deeper I got into those meditations and the more focus I got it seemed to be that the, the, the areas of the seven chakras, both on the front and the back, um, were areas where, where my awareness and the energy seemed to kind of warp. And, um, and I couldn't quite get a hold of them. And they were different than they, you know, say just 
you know, my forearm or whatever. <coughs> um, and so then things started to become really interesting. Uh, so then I, I started to, you know, feel energy in different ways, move it around my body and, and perceive the chakras. And, and I thought, you know, what the hell is going on here, right? Uh, you know, I, I didn't think that the energetic body that the yogis always talk about existed. I always thought, okay, so, you know, yoga is about uh, health in your body, health in your mind, focus, concentration. Uh, when you meditate, you're just, you know, learning how to focus and learning how to create a little bit more awareness. But, um, uh, and, you know, this whole thing about the energy body, yeah, pff, you know, whatever, right? I mean, that's just maybe a metaphor. And during this retreat, I found out that there, you know, the energy body is not a metaphor. I mean, it, it is a, it's, it's an experiential body. It exists. And as your awareness becomes very, very sharp and your focus becomes very, very sharp, and very keen if you apply it to the sensations in your body what starts to happen is that you're not just perceiving sensation but as you swipe that perception around you're starting to move energy around your body in very specific ways and you're starting to hit certain energetic centers for lack of a better word which is what these guys call the chakras now I didn't believe in any of this stuff but suddenly I was actually experiencing it during during the retreat and uh, it started to become more and more interesting, of course. Um, now, of course, this starts to then break certain paradigms in my mind. Because then you start to think, okay, well, if these guys have been talking about chakras and they turn out to exist and they've been talking about energetic body and that turns out to exist as well, um, what other yogic esoteric uh you know teachings turn out to be true i mean it's not as if they made things up you know they they, they sort of were accurate uh, and truthful up to the chakras and then they started to make shit up um from from that point onwards you know that that would make no sense right um so i started to question um my paradigm about the the yogic scriptures and and, and yogic texts and just how much of that stuff is true and just how deep the the rabbit hole goes when it comes to meditation and other yogic techniques uh, so that retreat started to become incredibly fascinating and Goenka which is the guy who essentially spread um, the the Vipassana um, uh, technique or, or, or philosophy if you will it's not a philosophy it's a technique the, the, the Vipassana technique uh, around the world and open all these um, uh, volunteer ran centers around the world he uh, you know they, they were playing videos of him every every day for about an hour and a half and he was explaining something very interesting which is to say that the sensations of the body and the deeper you can go into them are the portal to your subconscious mind and that's when my attention really became uh, triggered because for years and years and years I've been puzzling about what is the uh, the most pragmatic and and direct technique to to um, get in touch with your subconscious mind? And people talk about visualization, and people talk about repetition, people talk about you know emotions, which is by the way still very valid. Um, but here was somebody giving you a very tangible way to do it, which is through sensations in the body, but not just superficial sensations. And not just the gross sensations, but when you go very, very deep and very subtle into the sensations in your body, that means that you're creating a very direct connection between your prefrontal cortex and your subconscious mind, which is sort of, you know, back here and down in the more primitive sides, parts of the mind, even down to your medulla oblongata, which is the part of the, um, of the most, the most primitive, primitive part of the mind that controls all your basic uh, autonomic bodily functions, which is why <clears throat> when you get really good at this, like, like, you know, master meditators do and master, yo master yogis do, you are able to control the uh, autonomic part of your nervous system and the autonomic functions in your body you you you'd be able to control your endocrine uh, glands your, you'd be able to control your heart rate you would be able to control um, your blood pressure and things that are outside the purview of, of the regular human being 
because you know if you if you're living in your in your thinking mind um, and you're not going deep into subconscious uh, into your subconscious you're unable to regulate any, any of these things but the yogis and people who meditate for a very long time using these specific techniques because you could just focus on the breath and that could be your thing but if you start to go into vipassana type of techniques or or zen nikon type of techniques which we can you know touch on a, on a different video um or if you go into uh, kriya yoga type of techniques you're going very very deep into the body um and uh, th through through these kind of techniques and by doing so you're going very deep into your subconscious mind because the body sensations are controlled and monitored by um by the most primitive parts parts of your mind so you're starting to create that very strong connection there and you're starting to open that portal uh so halfway through the um through the retreat and i do apologize if i take occasional sips of my delicious chai halfway through the retreat i started to open a very direct and uh, somewhat scary connection with my subconscious mind um, and this started to manifest uh, in in different ways one way was that uh, through so many hours of meditation uh, of doing these body scans uh, you know my abdomen would start to move in funny ways and start to make all kind of noises and stuff and in the middle of the night I would find that that meditation would continue as I was sleeping it was just like there was no stopping it it was just you know it was doing it on its own um, I also started having incredibly lucid dreams so I would be able to just remember absolutely everything but I would also be very uh, mindful while I was dreaming so I would be able to see the dreams and uh, not not control them but but be very present during the the, the dreaming stage um, I also um, developed some uh, everything started to become a little bit sort of compulsive right uh, so that was that was another uh, kind of scary thing but um, something that that became very clear what to me was that opening the portal to the subconscious mind has to be done with with incredible care because it is one thing to say repeat something that you want to achieve every day on your normal state of mind right so you know uh, i want to be more disciplined i want to be more disciplined for example you, you repeat that you know every day maybe you have your little mandala bead and you you count little beads and stuff while you do that that's that's one thing but that's um that's a, a very uh rudimentary and very sort of low definition l low fidelity communication with your subconscious but when you're going very very deep into body sensations and and across the entire body the the portal it feels like you have a hotline to the subconscious and that whatever message you're dropping in there becomes amplified and multiplied immediately so i started to walk on eggshells suddenly because i felt like my god you know whatever i drop in there it just starts to become multiplied and goenka again the, the guy whose videos they, they play during the retreat uh stated this very very specifically he said it's it's um the law of nature is a law of multiplication right so so a little seed becomes a tree which then bears fruit and each of them has a seed which then bear fruits again endless endless multiplication and if you drop a seed deep in your unconscious it's going to multiply massively so once you're going very very deep this way you have to become incredibly careful in what you um what you drop in there uh and that became very very tangible to me during that retreat so i started to kind of walk on eggshells and go oh my god you know I've, I've opened uh you know this door now and and now my subconscious is watching whatever i think whatever i do whatever i tell it is just going to multiply it and it became a little bit scary to me uh and then there was the the end of the retreat as as i came out and because i had been moving energy up and down um in a rather aggressive way in retrospect uh i became um uh my, my energy became 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 a little bit dysregulated uh i never it's it's difficult to explain unless unless you've had these energetic experience what that means but it almost feels like you're having these these flashes of temperature and emotion that keep 
you know, that have become uh, dysregulated, essentially. Um, and I've, I've listened to other Vipassana uh, experiences, and a lot of people have this. Uh, and to me, it became somewhat pronounced, um, and it just kept, kept happening. I was a bit manic. Um, at the same time, I was not... Um, I felt incredibly intelligent. I was making a thousand connections per second. Uh, I kept having these lucid dreams and I thought, you know, that I just break my brain. I mean, it's operating on another level, but at the same time, it feels like I'm not ready to manage this energy. And uh, this is one of the reasons why you practice uh, asanas um, or, or yogic postures and certain diets and certain moral precepts throughout months and years um, and, and they say that it is to prepare your system for a higher level of energy to start running through it because when you're not ready uh, this can be just too much you, you can't handle it and that's exactly what I was feeling and so I called my uh, I called my guru uh, my uh, my pranayama guru um, Arno who by the way has somewhat volunteered to appear in this uh, in this vlog we'll see if we uh, can uh, can do a few interviews with him and and I told him all my symptoms, and he was laughing. And he said, "Like, yeah, you 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 know, you wanted to give yourself a, a you know an intense yogic experience, and now you have it. But you know, now you're freaked out. So uh, we um, we're gonna have to ground your energy." And he gave me some very specific exercises on how to do that. <clears throat> and I became very fascinated by those because they're very they're very they're very interesting practice in their own right. So um, so that's what I did, and my energy was grounded, and grounding energy became my my next. My next thing because it, uh, it's, a, it's a very good practice to have um, so I learned that as well um, but um, so you know key takeaways from the whole thing is that um, uh, first of all don't expect that to happen especially if you're if you're a newbie meditator because I had been preparing for this and doing some long meditations so I was I was ready to go in there and, and really you know go all out essentially um, but I also learned uh, that my paradigm about what yoga is was still fairly limited until now. And now I kind of begin to understand just how deep yoga goes and what it really is and what it's about. Uh, and, uh, and it's incredibly profound and incredibly powerful. And to someone who is uh, a little bit over eager or starts to play around with these things, it can be also very dangerous. It's not a toy. I used to um, listen to all these things about like, you know, there's a very secret yogic technique, but we don't teach it to people or, you know, please take it easy with this because your energy. And I used to think like, yeah, yeah, whatever, old man, just give me the technique. You know, I know what I'm doing. Have no freaking clue what you're doing, okay? You don't know what these things are about. The energy, the energetic system in your body and your mind uh, is incredibly powerful. Uh, for days, I felt like I was a 50 watt bulb through which a thousand watts of electricity were, were being, you know, just put through. Um, and um, so, you know, you can you can screw up your system if you don't know what you're doing here, uh, and, and you go all out. There's stories about people who, you know, went into one of these retreats and tried to sit for 24 hours straight, and then essentially lost their mind and had to be taken to a psych ward. So th these things are not a toy. They're not a toy. Uh, is not unsafe if you just follow the instructions and you take it easy. Um, but I've, I've learned just how powerful yogic techniques can be and, and how real the energy body is. Uh, the chakra system, incredibly powerful thing that I can't wait to explore more and learn more about and share more about uh, as, as I do these things. Um, but that was essentially my, my Vipassana um, experience. Do I recommend it? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I do recommend it, um, but uh, you know, know what to expect. It's a difficult retreat, and it's an incredibly powerful retreat, and it can be, be a very uh, disturbing experience. I was talking to my roomie, uh, one of the, the guys who uh, didn't quit, and um, so I, I had two roommates, one of them quit halfway through, uh, and, and the one who was left, he, he says that he was confronted with so much that he had no clue how he was going to go back and... Um, and reestablish his relationship with his wife and you know so it, it can stir up a lot of things it is definitely not meant for people who are not mentally stable who are going through a tough time uh, you need you need a solid base to go into one of these things because if you're unstable and you think that meditation is going to solve this a, a vipassana experience could easily push you over the edge if you're not careful so i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend vipassana as some uh, way to solve a problem for you okay 
And um, so all that said, uh, that was in a nutshell my Vipassana experience. Um, I feel like I'm able now to summarize it in a, in a sort of <laughs> more relaxed kind of way. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it, it helps, uh, helps in your journey. And uh, with that, I'm going to go back to my chai. I'm going to go back to uh, sitting in my hammock here. I have a couple of books that I want to go through um, and explore today. And um, yeah, just keep up your meditation. And uh, I hope to uh, share some more stuff with you guys soon. Enjoy. Cheers.